Howdy folks, this is Levi Kuhn at Kuhn Truck and RV. If you're class B and B plus RV specialists, please check out our website at truckandrv.com. That's truckandrv.com to view all of our inventory. And we'll put a direct link to this particular RV in the description below. If you follow that link, it's going to take you over to our website where you can see the pricing and the information on this unit. However, once this unit is sold, that link will be removed as that web page is no longer live. We are a full service dealer. We do have a warranty as well as financing. If you have any questions on those, give us a call in our office at 440 Ohio RVs. That's 440 OHIO RVS. Alrighty, folks, it's time for the inside portion of today's video tour. We are inside of this 1998 Explorer 230XLW. Explorer is spelled X-P-L-O-R-E-R, -E not to be confused with the Explorer Conversion Van Company, which is E-X-P-L-O-R-E-R. -E We've got 57,107 miles. Again, 57,107 miles on this 1998 Explorer 230XLW. Both front seats up here do swivel. Both front seats are cloth, and both of these are still in very good condition. This unit was actually a one-family-owned unit. Um, dad purchased the unit brand new. He lived out in Oregon. He used it to tour the Pacific Northwest as well as doing some touring in the Canadian um, Rockies, I believe. He passed about five years ago, and his daughter inherited it. She kept it for about five years, and she decided it was time to let, for her to let it let the Explorer van here go. So I had purchased it from her. So it's a two owner, all in the same family. We can create one small twin bed up here. This chair is gonna kind of jackknife down and lay flat. We're then gonna spin or swivel this front chair uh, to create a small twin size bed up in the front here. We do have a table here that goes in front of this chair, located and stored again along the wall here. Uh, this bracket here is gonna lock into this aluminum track on the wall. Then you're going to have a table here in this area. The side window does open. It cranks and tips out. And uh, that does have a screen on it. We have our thermostat here, which is going to control our cool cat heat pump, which is located right here. Our cool cat heat pump is going to give us our air conditioning. It's also going to give us um, electric heat via the heat pump. That is going to work down to roughly an ambient outside temperature of about 40 degrees. Below 40 degrees, you're going to have to kick on the propane furnace if you want to keep it nice and toasty in here. Uh, the propane furnace is located right here, the little brown or gray colored grill right there at the bottom. We do have a convection microwave oven in this one. It's located directly above this seat. Restroom, which is a wet bath, is located in there. I'll show you in a second when we're done in the kitchen. This unit did not have a battery disconnect on it when we repurchased it. So we installed a battery disconnect. The switch is there. That is actually a smart disconnect. Uh, we started using that style a little more. It will actually shut itself off. It has a computer chip in it. When the battery uh, voltage gets down to a certain, uh, when the battery gets down to a certain voltage, that will automatically kick the battery out. So there's no need for you to, you can shut it off manually if you rock that switch down. Uh, but if you forget, it will shut itself off. Storage over top of the kitchen. Single basin kitchen sink. Uh, faucet, I believe, is new. You have a flip-up counter extension here. Some storage underneath the sink. Refrigerator is a three-way, so that's going to operate on 12-volt electricity, 110-volt electricity, or propane gas. Levi, what, why do I have three a three-way refrigerator? You're going to use 12-volt electricity when you're traveling because the alternator is constantly charging your coach batteries. You're going to use propane when you're boondocking and you do not have electricity. And then you're going to use your 110 when you're either plugged in at a campground or you have your generator running. Uh, nice large stainless backsplash. The little catch here is to hold up the cover for the cooktop. That'll latch on there and hold that up when you're cooking. Two burner cooktop there. Uh, this here is a list of repairs that the previous owner had had done, uh, had completed in the last few years. A little story on it from her. Transmission service in 2017, battery... 2017 um, quite a few things on here she had the cost added up um, she was a little worried about personal information so she would not allow me to have the receipts uh, but she did show them to me and then she also gave me this uh, thing that she was so kind to type up for me so i had everything that was done as well as the amounts that she spent on those things that she had done i'm gonna leave that in here so you have that for future reference um Let's see, where do we want to go next? Pulling with my offhand. Um, 
This is intended to be the pantry. I think it may have originally been a wardrobe, but I think she converted it or her father converted it to a pantry. They added some shelving in here to give a little more space. The restroom, again, is a wet bath. This is all a one piece or uh, one piece form fiberglass shower pan, drain pan, everything here. Uh, we've got a commode, shower pan, then our shower walls, bathroom sink. The faucet here is going to operate the sink as well as the shower head. Pull up on the knob to divert it to the shower head, which is located right here. Nice mirror on the wall, uh, light in here. There is also a, the shower curtain is missing. Um, I did not put one in here. The guys did not put one in here because I'd probably put dogs in or puppies in. And I know a lot of you are cat ladies or cat men, um, so I didn't want to get the wrong one. But there is a shower curtain up here um, that if you are going to shower in here, I don't think the previous owners honestly did shower in here from what I recall her telling me. Uh, but you want to install a shower curtain so you can pull that basically across this. You're going to want to close the doors, but then you're going to pull that shower curtain across to keep the water uh, contained into the wet bath here and off of your doors. There is a pocket here for a table. The table is located in the wardrobe here. Right up top there to hang your clothes. And then there are some boards here so that you can make this into a larger bed if you so choose to. Uh, I do believe that most people are going to want to like or do like the twin bed configuration that it is currently in that allows you to kick your feet out uh, so you can get out of bed to go potty in the in the middle of the night. If you don't, you can turn this into one large bed. You're going to use those boards. Basically to fill this area here, you're going to have to take off the nightstand, place it on the floor, then you're going to use the back cushions to fill in the center runner to make one large bed. Again, you can do that. Most people tend to prefer the twin bed setup that it's in. Nice and easy to get out of bed in the middle of the night as well as in the morning. Uh, bed size here, we are roughly 75 inches long on both sides. 75 inches long and about 30 inches in width on both sides. This guy down here, that is your uh, fuse, fuse panel as well as your circuit breakers are also located in there. Side windows do open. The back window is your emergency exit. So you do not want to open that one unless it is an emergency. That glass is intended to fall out. You flip those red handles up, which you can't see real well yet, but you'll see them when we get back there. A little further, and that glass is, once you get past a certain point of pushing that up, that thing is gonna drop on the ground. Ask me how I know I had a customer drop one on the ground out here uh, because they were not aware of what the use of that was. A couple of lights back here for reading lights if you were laying in here and uh, wanted to read. We do have larger lights on the ceiling, 110 outlet, curtains, and then blinds on the side windows. Again, that one does open as well. The fabric cushions, everything back here also seems to be pretty dang nice. Today's second joke, this is my second video of the day, again comes from you to Brett, it comes to you from Brett who I've been emailing back and forth who had told me he was a comedian for about three years after he got out of high school or college. Why should you never run in a campground? You should always ran because it's past tense. Got a magazine rack on the wall here. This is a cup holder. Flips down, that flips up. Got a cup holder on the wall. Same thing over here. I'm gonna guess that was designed and intended for uh, TV remotes. Carpet is still in pretty dang good condition. We do have a little bit of a kind of a bleaching effect here on the side. You can see it's a little bit brighter there. Uh, but overall, carpet's in pretty dang good shape. Uh, TV, um, our guys replaced this. I had the old, actually I don't think I had a TV. TV originally would have been here, but it would have been big tube style, as I call them. Uh, we replaced it with a 19 inch flat screen, which also has a built-in DVD player in it. Uh, much easier to, less wires to run, so it's easier to install. Also easier for the end user to typically operate. It's all built in together. Overall, pretty dang clean coach again. Um, single family owned, two owners, same family. Outside shined up very nicely. You'll hear about that if you stick around for the outside portion of the video. If you, excuse me, somebody texted me and I just lost my train of thought. Uh, outside shined up very nicely. Interior, as you can see, is also very clean. Um, I don't see any rips, tears, stains in the carpet. Again, a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of that bleaching effect here around the doghouse or engine cover there. Uh, but overall, pretty dang nice. This does have air-assisted rear suspension. Um, flip these paddles up or down. 
I don't know how you can see it because it's kind of dark up here in the front, but uh, those will, it has an onboard air compressor so you can inflate or deflate your airbag assisted rear suspension. USB charging port. We do have some storage over the cab here, as well as some of the manuals. 110 outlet, 12 volt outlet, manuals. This is actually a cover for the dash. It was on there when we received it or purchased the unit. Uh, we left it in here for you if you want. It's one of those carpet covers that go across the dash. Here we have kind of our control center, our levels test. If we hold that, it's gonna light up our gauges, our water pump switch, and then our water heater switch. Remote start for our own in 4K generator is showing 34 hours. Power windows, locks, tilt, cruise, power mirrors. Does not have a CD player. It still has the old AM, FM with the cassette in it. Um, overall condition on this thing, I'm going to call this thing anywhere between a 9 and a 9.5. And Pretty dang nice clean unit for a 1998. If you have any questions on this one, give us a call at Coon Truck and RV. Best little RV dealer around since 1976. 440-OHIORVS. 440-OHIORVS. Alrighty folks, it's time for the outside portion of today's video tour. We are working on this 1998 Explorer 230XLW and we are 21 feet from bumper to bumper. The tires were installed of August 2018. We do have a 12 and a half foot awning. This one does sit on the Dodge 3500 chassis. It is powered by the 5.9 liter V8 engine. Uh, paint stripes, everything on this one shined up pretty nicely. There's a few minor uh, spots with the stripes, but overall for a 1998, uh, very nice condition on the exterior of this unit. Uh, we did do a tune-up on it. It's got new plugs and wires, cap and rotor, as well as installed a new rear sway bar. The stripes up towards the top here typically get more sun. You can see that one's a little bit faded. Got some spider cracks starting in that one. The ones down here lower on the body typically don't get as much sun, so they usually look a little bit nicer. And these ones down here on the main part of the body are in pretty good shape. First thing we're going to come to here is vent and access to the back of your refrigerator. This is a vent for your propane furnace. You've got a couple of exterior outlets, vent and access to your water heater. You have an auxiliary hookup here for your propane. If you get a small grill or something, you can hook that up there. Run it off the propane tank that's built into the units. Uh, crank for your awning, center rafter for your awning. This one, the small, this skinny or narrow portion of this up here is passed through so you can access that from either side of the coach then this big tray uh, here this does slide out there's going to be a catch on it and i've only got one hand but that does slide out and this here is your shore power cord coming around to the back of the coach Exhaust, the small exhaust over here is for your generator. We do have a tow package. We do have a small or narrow storage compartment here on the back of the unit. It does kind of go from side to side, but it is pretty narrow. Got a sewer hose there in the plastic bag, as well as some tire tools on this side. Shout out of that door there. The stripes here, they do show a little bit of fading. And some spider cracking starting. Onan 4K generator located in this driver's side rear corner compartment here. Then again, this pass through storage for this top shelf here. Close that so you can see the door. Here we're going to have a telephone hookup and then a cable TV connection. This here is where you're going to hook up your shore power cord. And this here is where you're going to fill your onboard freshwater tank. And this is going to be your city water connection. Took a porch light on this side. You can see all the little speckles. Those are actually just bugs. For some reason, I'm wanting to get my carport here and land on this thing. Um, back stripe is in good shape. The top one here on this side, uh, again, is fading. The same as about the top one on the driver's side. And again, the ones on the body here. These are in pretty good shape. We got our fuel tank, sewer connection, 
the black and gray valves for our sewer. And then this here can be used as sewer storage if you want to. Or sewer hose storage, I should say, not sewer storage. Sewer hose storage. Give you a nice long shot down this driver's side of the unit here. Overall, outside of this unit is in pretty dang good shape for a 1998.